Hello, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. <laughs> Whatever it is that you are um, from where you are tuning in from today, this is um, Jerome, my husband. <laughs> and this is Marty. You moved it a little too much. Behind the camera. And all right, so we're doing a few less minute technical adjustments <laughs> okay. and today is a little more challenging because I am trying to help Jerome in today's life for the first time in a <laughs> long time so I'm multitasking over here uh, let's see all right um, so let's do this okay um, let's do it all right, so let's get started. So today we are going to have a ficus demo, demo, as you see here, we have a ficus with us. And because two are better than one, today I'm going to join Jerome because he needs a lot of help for the foliate industry. That's right. So we're going to have this guy as well, but we're going to start with this one. But before we get started, please let us know in the comments where you guys are tuning in from today. Uh, we'd we'll love to say hello to you. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to be a little bit in front of the camera today, helping you on the foliating. So that's something new. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are sorry we rescheduled for this uh, Wednesday. Uh, Jerome wasn't feeling too well last Wednesday, yeah. but he's back on track and ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to leave it to you to let us know more about the ficuses and I'll start helping yeah, course, you defoliate. Of yeah, of course. I mean, I'm happy to be, you know, back and feeling really good. And I love that you right away, you know, challenged me with uh, two ficuses. I really appreciate that. Um, so what we have here today is a, a ficus mycocarper. Um, this is the uh, tiger bark. It gets its name from its tiger-like stripes on the bark. Um, both of these trees are naturally leaning towards that um, broom style. Um, they both have really thick trunks, a lot of root flare, and a lot of character. So I'm really excited to work on these guys here today. And so as you know, uh, the first thing that we usually do in the summertime when we work on ficuses is to defoliate them. And that is exactly what we are doing here today. Yeah, I mean, I especially love ficuses uh, because they are so uh, forgiven. Mm -hmm. and they're great for beginners we always have that question of like what should i start with um that is you know forgiving easy to like it's a fast grower so it's nice to see development quick very forgiving quicker than other species so we always have <coughs> ficus um and that was our dog which is <laughs> joining us today too because he's very um <coughs> scotty FOMO, right? FOMO, yeah. He can't miss anything, so he's here with us, and I think he heard a dog, so... Yeah. Scotty. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, what it is to go live at home is, is, is it's an experience. It is an experience. I'm going to have to step out to try to control this. Okay, so <laughs> what I am doing here now is... So the reason... Scotty, why, Scotty are you serious? So the reason... <laughs> The reason why we defoliate, um, and I'm sure that this question is already up there because it's always the first thing that people ask right away. Why do you defoliate in the middle of the summertime? Why do you defoliate your trees to begin with? And that's because, um, you know, in the middle of the summertime or like right now, it feels like it's in the middle of the summertime already. I mean, it's really hot, it's excruciatingly hot. Um, we want to defoliate for several reasons because in the summertime is the time when we actually work on tropical trees and this is a tropical tree um, and so that's why it's a good time to work on it right now. So when they are actively growing, perfect timing to come in here, defoliate, remove all the leaves so that you get a better understanding of the entire structure of the tree, right? Um, now, while we are defoliating, you could also go ahead and repot the tree at the same time, uh, trunk chop it, uh, root prune it, whatever comes to mind that you would want to 
do, right now is a great time to do that on a tropical tree. So even grafting, for instance, perfect timing to do it right now as well. The only thing that you want to look out for before you defoliate or repot is you want to make sure that you have at least two weeks, two consecutive weeks of 70 Fahrenheit at night. Um, that's the bare minimum. Plus plus is perfect. But if you have less than 70, do not repot your ficus or your tropical tree. All right. And for uh, those that are just tuning in right now, we um, are going to be working on two ficuses today. So we usually do one, <laughs> but since we have to reschedule this live, we're like, we're going to give you guys something extra. And that will be an extra tree <coughs> and my help. Today, I'm in front of the You're going to start the other tree? No. What? <laughs> my help defoliate. <coughs> oh, so I, I misunderstood them. <laughs> So I just wanted to say hello. Let's see over here. Um, Garen, hello, uh, Garen. Happy to be here. Chris <laughs> saying, got, got my sushi ready. Enjoy. Yeah. Uh, Garen, my stone pine is loving the organic fertilizer and doing so awesome. well. Thanks. That's amazing. Um, oh, that's amazing to hear. I we love to hear those kind of comments and, Absolutely. and people trying our, our products and loving it. So that's great. Um, Michael, happy Wednesday from the OG Yellow Paw Club. <laughs> Love it. Uh, yeah, glad to have you. Yeah. Pucho is saying lightning is uh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. How it sound? We're trying something different now with this um, wireless microphones. So let us know if you like the sound yep. as well. Um, Karen. Hi, Karen from Boyton. Wonderful. Uh, Garen is a duo, yes. Nicholas from Sydney, Australia. Oh. Wonderful, wow. Hello. Uh, Sam, greetings from Miami. Fun, fun, fun. Uh, see, and I see good feedback about the sound. Excellent. So we are in business. We're in good shape. Today. We're in good shape today. Um, besides the little dogs in the background that we what dogs? Have fixed. <laughs> what dogs? We are off to. Maybe people thought start. it was on their side, you know? Yeah. We could have totally fooled them. <laughs> we hope you all have dogs too. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, when, when we saw these trees, first of all, we were so happy to find these nice trunks. Yeah. I don't know if you guys noticed. And in fact, we haven't done like a 360 just yet, but. Um, <coughs> I guess after the, with the foliage, after we with do the, the 360. Foliage. Yeah, I mean... But the trunk, the size is really nice. I mean, you're, you're, at, you're spot on because we are so used to seeing these S-shaped trunks, especially on ficuses and Chinese elms. So it's really refreshing to see that they are now also making, you know, something a little different with a straight trunk and some cool aerial roots on here. So that's aerial really cool. Roots, we love that. Um, yeah, and I'm glad that you say that because that's one of my favorite things about ficus is the aerial oh, yeah. roots, actually. And this one has a lot of them. So that's wonderful. I know you, you have a different opinion on aerial roots. So I just wanted to <laughs> share with, with some people. I'm an aerial root fan. You're pro, okay. I do like how it looks. I, I have fun with it and I think it looks amazing. But you don't like them, why? Or so you don't prefer I them? I do more. like aerial roots, like of course because it's very unique. Like I can't take away from from the aerial roots, you know, per se. But what I don't like about it is that, for instance, on this trunk right here, you can see an aerial root coming out of the uh, trunk section, uh, a little higher up, and this it's right next to a branch. And so what happens is, once these aerial roots uh, reach the ground or the soil. They start to thicken up very, very quickly, and then it creates like inverse taper, and like it swells a little bit too much on certain areas of the trunk. And that's why I don't really like them. So, like I said, I do like them because it, you know, you get that really cool effect. Like, it's, mm -hmm. it's really cool, obviously. But then, what I like to do is um, at the end of the year, I always remove my aerial roots and then let them regrow the next year so that they always stay thin and skinny so your area roots you treat them pretty much like you treat leaves a little bit 
Yeah, in a way, definitely. I mean, I just, I just like to remove them to get uh, thinner aerial rows. So yeah. All right, defoliating the, uh, <laughs> defoliating the aerial roots. Yeah, defoliating the aerial roots. <laughs> the aerial rooting. I love it. And you guys, uh, here for the summer, we are actually in Texas. So it's hot. Oh my God. It is it's hot. It's excruciatingly um, hot. If you, we have anybody from Texas today, oh my gosh, like, we feel you. From the southern this part of Texas. This is insane. Um, yeah. Florida has nothing on this. I mean, we lived in Florida for a long time, but it never felt this hot. Was yeah. It, or am I no, but I, this, this is something that is no normal here either. They have this uh, heat, wave. heat wave that is uh, hitting us. So you have to be, of course, extra careful with your bonsai trees. Yeah. Jerome has been watering like two, three times a day. So what I do is I uh, water now a little later in the morning. Um, I used to water at 8. Uh, actually, I used to water at 7. Now I water at 8. So just to get that extra hour in. Then I uh, drench every single tree. Like I really, really uh, soak every single tree. And then usually around 5 o'clock when I come home, I then just mist all of my trees. I give them a good misting on the canopy and on the soil surface. Um, but I don't fully water twice, no. But uh, yeah, it's... You just have to pay attention on you, your you trees. Definitely Some have of to. them will be, especially, I think, what's the one that we're paying more attention? The cypresses. The, the ball cypresses, yeah. I mean, right now, all of my cypresses are in dishes of water to keep the, uh, you know, the soil moist longer and to prevent them from drying out. But still, man, it's just so brutal. Like a couple of days ago, it was 104. Um, and yeah. so you just have to be very careful. So if you get yellow leaves in the summertime um, on your ficuses, it could either be from white flies or because you're not watering enough. And most likely it's because you're not watering enough. Actually, I have not seen any white flies here in Houston. In Florida, mm -hmm. we used to have a lot of uh, white fly problems, which we don't have here. So that's, that's quite nice. Yeah, absolutely. And let me see, <clears throat> Pucho, you are from Connecticut, hello. Lee, hello guys, hello Garen. Hey, um, Dennis, I finally caught a live. <laughs> Hi guys, uh, happy to have you here. And a quick um, summary, we have two ficuses today with us, uh, two tiger bark ficuses. And we are going to be defoliating them. Jerome's going to be styling them. You guys can ask us questions um, or just comments. Uh, just have some fun with us today while we uh, boil here <laughs> <laughs> in our garage. And we're going to have two cool trees today for the auction. And for those that are new to our channel, we do this. Uh, oh, we try to do this once a month and the finished tree goes on to our website, thebonsaisupply.com mm -hmm. for a 48 hours online auction. So if you are in the United States and you want to get one of the finished trees, uh, you can bid for them and in 48 hours can be yours and ship straight to you. So, right. um, yeah, tag along to see how this turns out and then join us in the online auction right after. I usually have them available 30 minutes after the live. I take some pictures, I take some measurements and it's posted on the bonsaisupply.com under YouTube auctions. Mm -hmm. All right, and we are a little ready. more than halfway done with the defoliating, right? Oh, yeah. Defoliating is such a process, and that's why I'm joining today. <laughs> <laughs> because it's a lot. Yeah. It can be a lot. Actually, when we defoliate Anchor, for those that know Anchor, and if you oh, don't yeah. know Anchor, we do have the latest video on our YouTube channel is a story time about Anchor. And it's our Green Island ficus. When we have mm -hmm. to defoliate that one, oh my gosh, that also <laughs> takes a long time. Yeah, it really does. <clears throat> yeah, so 
that's when you take a friend, a nice significant cocktail. other, yeah, get some cocktails. As we have, this is Jerome's creation today. Yeah. See? And invite them over to the foliage. Um, we don't guarantee they're gonna be your friends after, <laughs> but uh, yeah, just be careful who you pick because it's a right. test. <clears throat> it sure is a test to your friendship, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, also, there is a video. This month was all about ficuses, so it's also a video about the ficus species. And there's so many different species of ficuses. So take a look at those that we cover and that we mentioned. There are great species for bonsai and more information about it. We're going to be talking today more about the species. And um, you can go back to that video and see more information um, if we don't cover everything that is already covered in that video. So, so you know. Let's see. And next month. A species is dwarf jade, Portula carrier afra. Yeah, so I'm really excited for that one. Also, stay tuned for the next month species, which is gonna be our jades, our Portula carrier afras. All right, let's see. What a nice trunk! I really like this trunk. Beautiful trunk, yeah. <coughs> Let me see. What's yeah. Right, so. I see someone from Brazil. Hello, Maria. Maria wrote something in Portuguese, but I wouldn't even try to say <laughs> that. Yeah. But amazing. All right. Let's see. Now, the good thing is to note that when you defoliate, it will be always the least amount of leaves on the tree at that time. Because once you defoliate, more leaves will come back. Something to keep in mind. It's going to take you longer with each defoliation. <laughs> Something to be looking forward to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so maybe you want to have a uh, show hand, Ficus. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> and for those that don't know what show hand is, it's just a very small, all this, one of the smallest size of bonsai trees. So little trees it's your bonsai. favorite, no? Like yeah. You, you love it? I love the little ones. They are easy to move around. They look great. Quick to, to work with them. Quick to defoliate. Oh, they are kind of difficult <laughs> to defoliate. Oh, well, you have to be careful for them, for sure. But um, No, because they also have a ton of leaves. Yeah. Okay, so you do, you're you doing really good at defoliating. I'm yeah. going to take a little water break while you mm. cook. Because you're doing this really good, like really good professional. Professional style. Mm -hmm. There's these little ones that are in the middle that I don't know if I'm going to... Is, is it okay if I lift them or should I take everything, even the things in the middle? I allow you to lift them. Okay, he allows me to lift them. <laughs> um, Okie dokie, we're getting close. Okay. So I'm usually the one picking uh, the trees. And so a little tip or a little insight of, on our process is that we first, first, first look for the trunks. And that's something I said earlier that is, I love, love, love the trunks of these fi mm -hmm. two ficuses. They are thick, they are full of area roots, and that's the first thing that we see pretty much in every tree. Uh, and then we, of course, go, go with the branches. Like, ideally, the most branches the better, so you can have options, you know, you can play with the tree more, but yeah, a nice, interesting trunk, good branching. Mm -hmm. It's something that we look for every time we try to pick good material. Oh, you're spot on, yeah. For bonsai. And actually, you choose 90% of all of our material, so. I have a good eye, I have to say. Not to be bragging about it, but. <laughs> Well, usually what ends up happening is that we usually know the <laughs> owner of the nursery where we pick up the uh, trees and then I talk to them while this one takes off. Oh, yeah. He, he's a talker. Happens? Funny because <laughs> it seems like he's not in the... Well, I mean, you are, but it's like funny enough you are... Yeah, you talk a lot. A lot. You think so? <laughs> 
I think I speak the, uh, norm, the uh, normal amount. So I disappear a little bit, and then I come back with all the material, <laughs> okay. and Jerome obviously is still talking, and I was just like, well, you can talk freely now because I already have all the material. Well, that's good to know that this is how you feel. <laughs> I did not know that, but that's good to know. Thank you so much. Yeah. And by the way, the, this tree, every time you cut a leaf, it has like a white... Sap. Sap. Um, yeah. This is not toxic. No. So it gets your fingers a little, like it leaves like that black, mm -hmm. like goo-like feel on your fingers. So you can just use um, goo gone after. It's like a spray, yeah. it's an orange spray, sprayed on your hands. And it'll come right off. So on ficuses, we don't really use cut paste um, because of the sap. Um, just like with pines, they also have a good amount of sap. So you don't have to use cut paste on small, you know, cuts. Mm -hmm. If I make larger cuts, I would still use cut paste. Yeah, I, I mean, I would recommend maybe if you are little, like, I mean, I'm regretting actually not wearing uh, gloves? gloves right now. Because, yeah, it gets very sticky. Yeah. But it's not toxic, so no. that's a good thing. I think I can start to uh, wire this one, to be honest with you. Okay. Because, you awesome. know, a lot of these branches might even... Well, I'm using this. <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to clean this a little bit. A lot bit. of these branches might even go, you know. Let's do a little 360 of it. Okay. What's your cocktail? <laughs> I don't want right. to... Well, I drink my cocktail. Okay, ready, ready, ready. Really, really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the trunk is really, really nice. Very thick. Now I just have to make a good decision about front. First step, we're going to pick a front. Mm -hmm. um, give us some tips of how you pick the front. <laughs> so I kind of look for the largest part of the trunk where it spreads the widest. Um, but then next up, I want to look of, at the uh, overall design of the tree. So I'm, I'm looking from the bottom all the way to the top. I'm looking at different possibilities. I think this has to be it. I mean, this trunk is really yeah. nice right here. I think sometimes the tree has like multiple options and I'm like, give it to you, put it out to the public and let's, let's decide. But <laughs> right. I think in this one it's pretty... Pretty out there, this front. Like, I think this is for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I knew it right away that this was going to be the front. Oh, mm -hmm. so I thought. So and now I kind of... why, let's say, why... What you guys are looking at right now will be the back. So right. why we're not considering this as the front? <laughs> because the uh, trunk looks the best from this side right mm -hmm. now. I also like the, the branch uh, placements because when I look at the branches that I have... I know I can place them quite nicely in their broom style. So that's why this is the front. The back right here, what I don't like about it is that obviously you guys see it from there. This hits you right in the face. You don't see a lot of trunk movement. From this angle here, you can get to appreciate the trunk movement. Yeah. So that's why I'm going to use this as the front. So yeah, that's a great tip. If you are unsure of your front, try to pick one that um, highlights the best, the trunk line. So for us, it's going to be this, just, I want to, can you, um, put, um, a chopstick, chopstick? Okay. just to have that front in there, show it to the people and then we come back. And just as a disclaimer, we do have a second tree and I am going to begin already to defoliate it. So we can so, save some time. I appreciate that. What do you want me to mark the front? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is gonna so we be mark my front. the front. Perfect. Yeah, this is going to be my front. Right in here, I think. Um, the front might change slightly, but I think all in all, this is where I want it to be. Now, oh, be careful with your drink, because I almost knocked it oh, off. Oh, my drink is in the way. That would have been, well, that would have been a terrible uh, beginning to... Do you have enough space over there? Uh, I think so. I can move my chair a little bit. That's okay. Um, so usually once I start to apply the wire, uh, a, lot, a lot starts to change at that point. That's why I'm, I'm not like, uh, it's not set in stone that this is the front. 
um, I just now start with the uh, thickest two branches, wire them together, go on to the next branch, to the next set of branches, and then all of a sudden kind of a picture appears, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You gotta be flexible. Absolutely. Uh, sometimes yeah, the tree tells you what's the front. <laughs> and you know, a lot of times, uh, whatever you think is the front, it's going to turn into the back. Uh, either at, by the time you're done styling it, or sometimes like years later. Like it happens to me all the time where I'm like, okay, now the back of this tree actually looks a lot better after 10 years. Um, it just happens that way. So just be flexible. Absolutely. Be, be like wire, be flexible. <laughs> be like wire. Be Jerome like wire. Kellerhaus, I love it. Be like bonsai wire. Flexible. Be like, yeah, I like it. Right. Trademark, trademark. <laughs> <laughs> so so much wisdom. Um, let's see. Karen is asking, what's in Jerome's water? Yeah, what's in your water, Jerome? So you didn't think that was good, Karen? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, in my water, it's just water. Yeah. <laughs> it's also lemon, no? Lime, lime. Lime, okay. Lime. Now, in Spanish, lemon and lime is the same, it's the right? Same. See, I did not know that. I just recently found out about that. Um, Tim, hey guys, what can you do to encourage area root Ooh. growth? That's a great question. That's a great question. <coughs> okay, so you need a few things in order to get area roots. Now, the first thing that you need is a lot, a lot of heat. So you need to have temperatures of 90 Fahrenheit plus. You need to have a lot of humidity. So you need to have maybe 70% humidity at least for it to get started. And then those two things are like a must. But then the next thing is that you can actually let your tree get root bound. And when you let it get root bound, it will force aerial roots like crazy. So you do need the heat, you do need the humidity, and then just let your trees get uh, root bound. Root bound meaning don't repot your tree, let all the roots fill the pot. Once the water starts to like pool and like sit on top of the uh, topsoil and it doesn't go down right away, just wait another year to repot and then you will see more aerial roots than you know what to do with. <laughs> but unfortunately, you cannot compromise the heat and the humidity. You need to have so much heat and humidity for it to happen. So yeah. in this case, right, if they already have area roots, mm -hmm. let's see that someone um, wins this tree and they live somewhere where there's not that much humidity. Mm -hmm. So how, like, will they lose their area roots or is already there? And no, it's a, the area okay. roots that are here, you're going to be able to keep. Um, <laughs> so like, for instance, when we lived, uh, when I had all my tropical trees in Georgia all year round, I could not produce aerial roots because it was not hot enough. So no new ones, but if no you have a tree ones, that no. already has aerial roots, it will keep them. Oh yeah, it will keep roots. them, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so unfortunately that's kind of the trade-off. Um, it's very difficult to create aerial roots in a non-humid, non-hot climate. So the moral of the story, I will say, if you are in a humid climate, go for it and grow those aerial roots. Yeah. If you're not, then get a tree already that has area roots. Easy from another peasy. <laughs> Easy peasy. And I mean, you'll be surprised sometimes. Uh, I have like, because you know, we do those, we used to do those classes where we would do, uh, people would bring their own trees and they came from different states. And I actually met a guy there who has had aerial roots growing on his ficus and he was in New York. So it could happen. I just have not been able to do it in New York, but... Maybe he had it in a greenhouse over the summer to get extra heat, extra humidity, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. All right, let's see. So you guys are a little quiet in the chat. Give us some questions so I can keep Jerome challenged they're, while he They're nervous wires. to see you. They're like, who is this lady? <laughs> Who's the lady? Um, but I just wanted to say that for... Ooh, very nice. 
I think what happened since the, our last life is that Jerome went to North Carolina, right? Yes. You went to rally for the club. I went to the uh, Triangle Bonsai Society. Yeah. Which and was a blast. He had a great time. Absolutely. And next month, uh, we're going to the Atlanta Bonsai That's Society. Right. That's so right. it's fun. So if you guys are in Atlanta or close by, we'd love to see you there. Uh, it's July 22nd. Mm -hmm. I think you're right about that. And we'll be in Atlanta. Yeah, Atlanta is always a good time. Let's see. Uh, huh. Did you guys think of going to the International Bonsai Exhibition in Russia through this year? You can also craft the area rule. Oh yeah, okay. So two things. First, are we thinking about going to the International Bonsai Exhibition in Russia Rochester this year? Uh, I don't know. I think it's... Well, I'm not sure when, when it is. Isn't it in uh, December? September, no, September. September, September, October. Yeah. Those two months this year are packed. So we haven't taken a look now. I'm actually going to take a look because we did go maybe four four years ago mm -hmm. four years ago i think it was in a 2017 and it was great we had a great time so um for those that are close to the area or or can get to rochester new york is definitely a great exhibition it happens uh every two years mm -hmm. so yeah that's is a great 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 exhibition I'm trying to see we Oh, uh, okay. So now I'm seeing. It's September 9 and 10. So that's when you are away with your dad, right? I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not here. Yeah, so we're not going this year, no. But it's a great place, definitely a great exhibition if you guys have the opportunity to attend. And yeah, those, those events are always fun. So much fun, so. And, no, oh, Chris is thing? saying you can also graft the area roots. So what do we, what is your <coughs> opinion in grafting area roots? I mean, you can, and this is something that we would do in Florida, but you still need... The humidity, to, yeah, for sure. But you, no, you still need to have the area roots to graft on area roots. Mm. You know what I mean? So if you don't have any, any, any area roots at all, it's not going to work because you don't have any area roots. Mm, so you do need to have some sort of aerial roots to start with. So a lot of times what we would do if we had an aerial root out here and we wanted to move it closer, we could like make a hole in the trunk, feed the aerial roots in there, feed them into the soil, and then they will start to fuse together. But once again, for, for that to work, you, I do think that you need a lot of heat too, and you need to have the aerial roots already existing. Mm-hmm. All right. And yeah, this, good tip. I appreciate that. This question from Gehring, do the leaves come back in a, a smaller after the foliation? So after the foliation, the leaves come back kind of on the larger side at first, but you eventually the leaves will come back smaller. So every time you defoliate, you get more leaves, which means that the leaves will come back smaller and smaller and smaller. And so what we do is so we defoliate, right? The leaves will come back a little bit on the larger side and then we want to we would remove then the larger leaves that come back so just go through your trees once a week maybe remove all the larger leaves on all of your trees and every time you remove a larger leaf uh, two smaller ones will come back so you can shrink them down very very quickly and easily but in order to you know shrink down the leaves like to think about that you want to make sure that you have your main branches, secondary and tertiary branches all in position before you think about shrinking them. Yep. Let's see, I think there are a little more questions about Area roots, um, let's see. Um, 
I don't know. I think it's Derek just comment. Uh, comment. Okay. All right. Ru Ruben. Hi, guys. What advice would you have on keeping ficus indoors? And he says, I'm in a pretty hot climate. Um, do you just want to have them inside because you don't have any space outside, I assume? Um, so the best place is always outside, especially if you live in a hot climate. Like, Ficus you, like it. Yeah, Ficus will absolutely love it. Full sun. Um, but however, if you can't leave them outside because of space or whatever, what I recommend is that you get a, a humidifier. So you need to have humidity inside your house have some sort of a uh, fan on like whether that's a, a ceiling fan somewhere on low in the room you just want something to circulate the uh, air um, other than that you would need to have a lot of uh, light so either you need to have a grow light or if you have it directly by a window that gets at least like eight to ten hours of direct full blasting light you'll be okay if you don't have that you definitely need a green a grow light yeah, they're pretty, they usually do pretty well with windows as long as they, yes, Jerome says they're bright windows. Like It's, it's always get. like this, right? Like a tree will survive, yeah, by a window, even if it's less uh, sunlight. But if you want your tree to thrive, to really grow and, you know, uh, really, really thrive, then you need to have uh, heat. Outdoor is always best. Yeah. And yeah, they, ficus, they do love the heat. Um, of course, you still have to check the watering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the heat. Yeah, of course. I mean, but I'm assuming that this person lives in like a condo or something like that, where they might not have, you know, a lot of outdoor space. I would assume that's why they want to keep it inside. Mm -hmm. Feel. Oh, Nick is so nice. He's saying he's in Boca, but never got to visit us in Florida when we had the shop. Oh. Uh, well, we're happy to have you here online, <laughs> <laughs> at least. So that's, that is something. Uh, Phil, how old are these ficuses? I would say probably around eight, eight years old. Maybe closer to 10? Yeah, I will say. It's always like difficult. That. It's always difficult to say because we don't really know 100% where they came from, how long they've been here. They could be a lot older, but I'm going to, you know, be on the conservative side and give you kind of like the lowest age that I think. Mm -hmm. So 10 years minimum and an open ceiling, open end there. Yeah. I mean, to me, I mean, the size of the trunk trunks. and the arrow roots. Give okay. What would, you, what would you say? Uh, yeah. No, I mean, for sure, at least 10. 10 minimum. Okay. So mm. we agree. Well, that doesn't happen too often that we agree. <laughs> of course, because you're always wrong. Wow. There it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> uh, let's see. Wow. This tree is, is crazy. Have like, you even started yet? I thought I've been doing this for the past three hours and the tree looks Nothing. the same. <laughs> definitely tests your patience. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's see. So where are you going? Oh, where are you going over there? You're just wiring um, branches? I'm doing a, uh, definitely I'm doing a uh, um, broom style. Ooh, okay. Oh, definitely. I mean, this tree wants to be a broom style, I feel like. Naturally, it just said, Jerome, turn me into a broom style. And I said, okay. Oh, he told you, huh? It sure did. It sure did. If you guys start listening to your trees or hearing voices from your trees, I'm just saying. Then you're, you're doing it right. I, yeah, you're doing it. Just don't <laughs> tell people when you, trees talk to you. <laughs> Just don't say it out loud. You can say it to other bonsai people. That's fine. Like I can say it to you guys, you know, I feel comfortable here, <laughs> but I would not say it anywhere else. Are you crazy? <laughs> we'll call the police immediately. Call the police? Oh yeah. Uh huh. Oh my goodness. Let's see. One is in, how about 
14,000 K LED lights. I use that on corals successfully. Um, so I don't know, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I have been using successfully and that works. Mm -hmm. uh, so <clears throat> could be, I'm going to leave it at could be, or I'm going to leave it at I don't know. So what I use is a HPS lights. Um, those are probably the more like the closest to being natural outdoor light. Um, and I use at least 60 watts and that usually does the job. Um, and I like HPS light because they do uh, release a lot of heat, which is great in the winter time. You don't have to uh, heat, you know, so that's really nice. Um, so that's what I use, yes. Okay. Let's see. Um, so our friend's actually from Australia. The okay. one that wanted to keep the ficus indoors. Okay. And he's like, I'll just like to display some indoors next to the window. Okay. Which is a great so, reason too. <clears throat> so what I would recommend in that case, because I know exactly what you're talking about, right? You want to have your trees inside. Uh, to enjoy them indoors as well, of course. So what we do is usually like once a week, we go through the backyard and it's mostly Mari and she picks, you know, the best like two, three trees. She brings them inside over the weekend, displays them somewhere, right? And then Monday they go back out because we are not at home anymore then. So we get to enjoy them while we're at home and we don't have to sacrifice on the trees, health, right? By bringing them inside. For just the weekend so that's kind of what we do i don't know if that's something that you would be open to trying to do but it would be better for your trees if you did something like that but definitely this is a great species to also just have them indoors mm -hmm. here and there like some of some of the trees we really can just bring indoors for the evening but then you have to bring them out right away after like mm -hmm. the next day but now, ficus are a little more forgiving in that <clears throat> mm -hmm. Now, for instance, like uh, here, like some, uh, if you have maples and you live in a hot climate, they would be good to bring indoors and display them and keep them inside for a little longer because they don't grow much during the uh, summertime anyways. So, yeah. All right. And, oh, that's a really nice friend from Mexico. Saying so thank you for taking the time to share with us your time and love. Yeah, of course. Thank um, you for spending your time with us. Yeah, let's see. Um, Dave is saying, Ficus do really well with clip and grow technique. I guess, can you talk a little more about it? Yeah, of course. So, <laughs> he's spot on. I mean, if you have seen the video about uh, Angkor, which is m one of my favorite ficuses that I own, uh, it's a yeah, root of a statue ficus, really cool. So I do use the clip and grow method there. And basically the way I use the clip and grow method is that first I want to make sure that all of my main branches are in place. Main branches and secondary play branches are in place. So this tree right here, I'm defoliating it, I'm wiring it to make sure that the first set of branches are in place. Then I'm gonna let it grow back out, defoliate it again next year, in the meantime, just trim it back into this canopy style. The next time, I'm gonna place a secondary and maybe some more uh, main branches if I have to, if they have not set. And then after that, so year number two, I usually don't use any more wire on my trees and I go into the clip and grow. And so you just trim, your branches into the direction you want them to grow and basically the way that it works is here you see my branch the last leaf that i leave the new branch will grow into that direction that's clip and grow so i know that my next branch will grow into this direction and i can create movement like that it will take a lot longer but if you use the combination of clip and grow and like i just described like uh you, you wire your style and then you use the clip and grow, you get the most like natural branches I find. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this looks good. I like it. I mean, broom style is also one of my favorites. Oh yeah, I love it too. And ficus is in general are great candidates for it. Okay, people, I think we are done with this one. 
first this is one the front. out, and I'm still defoliating in the second <laughs> one, you guys. Cool. So then we're going to talk about pots on the meat type. <laughs> no, no, no. Help me defoliate <laughs> this. We'll do pots at the same time. This one's going to go for now. That was quick. Then we'll do a okay. 360 and some pots option. You see, guys, what I have to deal with? <sighs> she puts me through the ringer. Yeah, but it's so hot right now, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. So, I mean, ficus is like, I think, bear with me, but ficus is like that natural broom style, right? Like that big umbrella shape canopy of like a ficus is a, uh, an extension of the broom style, right? Uh, the way that the branches are placed. It just looks so cool. And, you know, I was talking a lot of crap about aerial roots at the beginning. But mm. if you have that umbrella canopy, you're in a shallow pot. And then you have these fine aerial roots coming down. I mean, it doesn't get a lot sexier than that. It's, <laughs> it's really hot. Yes, I agree. But then you just have to be so careful to make sure that you don't let uh, certain branches thicken up too much. Otherwise, you will ruin your tree. But you know, at the same time, if you don't care about having some thick branches here and there, and you're not taking it to a show just for at home, who cares, right? Um, I like to uh, train my trees to take them to exhibitions, right? Um, so that's why I would. That's why I don't like to have the uh, branches ruined. I feel like I'm over-explaining myself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I you're explaining us oh, or explaining yourself. Like, I don't, I don't I still know. Want, like to convince yourself? Or convince I still don't want any enemies, you know? People say, oh my god, this guy doesn't like aerial roots, you know? <laughs> oh, it's fine. We, we understand your position. Okay. Good. It's all good. Freedom of speech. You know what? I had enough. I'm out of here. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, did you cut some branches off here in this area? No, that I remember. Because I feel like there were a lot longer branches here earlier. Mm. I feel like you just... Well, sometimes... Oh, and, and here, the, the tree talks to me. Oh! <laughs> it tells me that I should oh, cut some okay. branches. Yeah. You see, guys? Can't tell my wife anything. <laughs> now she used it to her advantage. And all the branches that I needed on this side are gone. I'm going to have to improvise. <laughs> You're good at improvising. Yeah. And the tree is speaking for itself, you know? Yeah, I mean, I do miss, you know, not living in a hot climate. Well, let me tell you what I miss. I don't I'm miss like, the heat. I'm like, we are in a hot climate right now. <clears throat> yes, we just got here. But that's something that I've been missing is growing these big ficuses, you know? Oh, man. I loved it. Remember, I used to have a lot. Yeah. And I used to have big ones too. Oh man, that was a lot of fun. Let's um, go over care and maintenance of the ficuses. Since okay. We're in the last so, tree. what kind of care do you want to talk about? Like annual care or like summer care, like right now care or just. Let's do seasonal care in general. Okay. Well, actually, basically. I may, I'm going to make this extremely, extremely easy for all of you guys, especially if you're a beginner. Write this down. Do everything in the summertime. And that was it. Care and maintenance. So, <laughs> so everything that you can think of, anything and everything, defoliating, trimming, uh, trunk chopping, uh, digging it out from the ground, repotting. Have I said repotting yet? So literally anything, you do it in the summer and you can do it all at the same time. Super, 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 super easy, fantastic. Now, what do we do throughout the rest of the year, right? We're working on our ficuses right now. And then once they start to grow again, what do we do at this point, at that point? So at that point, we like to trim our ficuses back into shape for the rest of the year. Just let them outgrow the canopy shape a little bit, right? Like this is my canopy here. Let it outgrow several inches and then trim it back, right? Another thing that we can do uh, after the summertime is keep an eye on those wires, right? Make sure that when they start to dig in, we remove them. Uh, fertilize, spray for insects. That's pretty much it. That's all we do for the rest of the year. So, and if super it's easy. winter and you are 
protect your trees in the winter if yep. you are in I a was, place where the winters are. I was making my way there, but yeah. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> she thought I was going to forget okay. about the wind. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, ficuses or all tropical trees need to be protected once the night temperature drops below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. But <laughs> that's what they teach you. But I do one better. I move my trees inside when the night temperatures start to creep into the uh, lower 60s. And the reason why is because I want my tropical trees to continue to grow throughout the winter time. And if I let them grow, go down to 50 and then I bring them inside and indoors is usually 70, right? During the winter time, there's a huge temperature difference. So you need to have a, a lot more heat and humidity at that point to trigger your tree to continue to grow. But if you go from 60 to 70, 10 degrees is not a big difference, you know? in terms of like mm. climate fluctuation. Now, obviously your tree will pause once you bring it inside and that's because of the difference of the light. So when you move your ficus inside, all of a sudden it starts to drop some leaves. Uh, you get some leaf burns, yellow leaves, all that cool stuff. Actually, all that crap stuff. I'm like, cool stuff? It's not cool stuff. I'm sorry, I got a little <laughs> overexcited here. Uh, all that bad stuff, that's usually because of the difference in light. Okay. Also, because it's so hot, my brain is not working mm. too well. I'm from yeah. Switzerland, yo. I just want to point this out. I'm from Switzerland. It doesn't get hotter than 70 <laughs> degrees over there. So, yeah, right now it's really hot. Um, I am excused. But what is the care for whoever wins these trees? And by the oh. way, these trees are going to go on, on our website, thebonsaisupply.com, under YouTube auctions, and you can bid for each of them individually. Okay. So, so just wanted to let you know, but, um, so yeah, so once let's say you bid, you win, you won this tree, what you should do as soon as it arrives. Gotcha. Home. Gotcha. Okay. So <laughs> as soon as you get it, move it out into full sun, it won't have started to grow by the time that you get it. So when I say to you guys, do everything at the same time, I literally mean the same time, like right now the foliate, right? Wire style and repot, right? If the leaves start to come back, don't repot at that point anymore. If they just start to push, you can still go ahead and repot, but if they are fully out like this leaf right here, don't repot anymore at this point. But that won't be the case um, because it usually takes about two to three weeks after a full defoliation for a tree to come back. So once you get it, perfect timing, go ahead and repot it right away. Um, I would say the smallest pot that you would want to choose would be a 12 inch pot size. Um, and if you want to go a little crazy like I would, uh, if this was my tree, I would go into a 14 or maybe even six, uh, 14 inch, but I would go shallow, two inch shallow oval because I want to have that uh, really big uh, umbrella dome, you know, mm -hmm. over the pot. And these aerial roots. Oh, great. Now he loves aerial roots. <laughs> <laughs> and let's say that by um, any chance you don't find a pot on time or something like that, mm -hmm. you can always reuse this pot until... Yeah, of um, course. Um, just make sure so, to use good bonsai soil. So I would recommend that if you say, hey, I don't have a pot for it right now, but I just want to make sure that the tree is at its best uh, health, right? I would still recommend that you repot it put it back in the same container, but use new soil. So it is in our all-purpose bonsai soil mixture, but it's completely root bound. So we actually keep all of our trees that we use in like these live demos for at least a year. And when we get them, we repot them into our soil because what we want to make sure is that the tree perform well while we have them. So that's just something little added bonus for you guys to know that you are getting a really good tree health wise right mm -hmm. and all of that stuff so that's why wonderful and i see um another question about area roots <laughs> you guys love area roots we, I we can do too tell. <laughs> and the good news is that <laughs> these two trees they're full of area roots oh yeah so that's nice 
Um, but this question is from Sam and it's how do you keep area roots from drying out before they reach the soil? Okay, so this is a very, very old trick, but it's a very good one. <coughs> what you can do, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I still have a slight cough. As soon as they start to form on the branches, use a straw and slice the straw lengthwise and then wrap like put feed the uh, aerial root into the straw and then have the other end of the straw touch the soil that will keep the humidity in the straw and will make your aerial root guide down into the soil and then once it touches the soil and starts to thicken up you can just remove the aerial root and you're good to go so that's a very good um little side tip so i'm glad that you asked yeah wonderful um and lee's asking how do ficus reproduce naturally um do they all produce fruits so they do produce a, a little berry and that's how they uh propagate um there's a little wasp that goes from ficus to ficus and propagates them um so they do propagate from seed eventually through a, fr a fruit but you could uh propagate it at home uh, through cuttings, through air layers, uh, through seeds, if you had any. Um, so what we actually used to do, this is a little, little tip I'm going to share with you guys, just don't get caught. When I used to live in Florida, and this was before I, I met Mari, I was not allowed to do that anymore after, um, I would drive around with a, a shovel and a, a handsaw uh, in my trunk. So, because in Florida, when you drive through neighborhoods, you go visit your friends, they all have ficus trees and most of the people don't care, you know. So you just get out, take your saw, cut off a huge piece of um, trunk, like it can be like a foot wide, who cares. Put it into some soil and it will regrow, you know. Why are you laughing? No, <laughs> I'm just Am saying I giving bad advice? That is, <laughs> that is so creepy that you're like, oh, we got a chainsaw in your, in your truck. That's oh. like, like. That's why I said I did it before I met you. Yeah, good because that's that well, will look, scare look, any woman. Look, you go to some friend's home, house, right? They have a house party or whatever, and you see, wow, there's a big willow leaf ficus right over there. Look at these branches, right? And then when everybody is drunk, you ask the owner, hey, would you mind if I, you know? And they're usually like, do whatever you want. I don't care. And you're like, sounds good. Yeah. Tips by Jerome. How do you get shot <laughs> by a stranger? That's why you always by ask. By knocking at a door and be like, can I have your trees? Actually, to be honest with you, without a lie, this is how I have gotten a lot of trees in the past. If you speak to homeowners when they're already outside and you're like, hey, uh, I just drove by and I saw this tree. Like, what's the story? 99 out of 100 people will say, oh, I really can't stand this tree. It's been here since I moved in. Oh, well, great opportunity right here. Let me take it for you, you know? Yeah. Am yeah. I oversharing? No, I mean, <laughs> Sam is saying that he did the same today. So I guess this is there the thing. You, see, there you go. <laughs> Just be careful out there when you do these kind of things. Always um, ask for permission. <laughs> Let's That's see. Sure. Um, Always ask for permission unless nobody is around and just take it. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Don't follow any advice that you're He's not a reliable source. <laughs> um, we might have to take this video down after we post it. Oh my gosh. Too much bad advice. So uh, I want to share this comment from Nick, which is really nice. He says, ever since watching the Pixie Bougainvillea cutting growing video six months ago, I've grown at least 10 large Pixie Boogies wow. from cuttings in different colors. There so thanks go. so much for that video. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, yeah, that was a good one, man. Yeah. Bougainvilleas are great. Yeah, they are. I'm glad that it worked for you. That's another one we used to saw with the handsaw and collect. It's Bougainvilleas. Yeah. Oh, and Gehring is so sweet. Um, he says, love the show. Wish me luck when I bring home a new tree and my wife sees it. So here's <laughs> what you do. Okay. More advice from Jerome. This is going to be uh, advice by Jerome advice. today. Okay. Drink. So here's what you do when you bring home 
a new tree. There's a few different variations, but I'll tell you which ones have not worked for me. So, or have worked for me. So one thing that you can do is when you bring a tree home and your significant other says, wow, did you just get another tree? You can just play it cool and be like, what new tree? That tree has been there forever. Like you comment on it every week. You're like, wow, I really like it. How beautiful. Remember last week it was in full bloom and you were like, wow, I really love that tree. When has that ever worked? <laughs> it has not? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. No. Um... Then what's your advice? Let me take some notes too. Somebody take notes for me, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Well, I mean, everything is time, you know, good timing. So let's say bring something else besides the tree. Maybe just bring some flowers with it. And you're just like, you know. That works. Yeah, that is, um, I stopped to get, you know, this tree for us. You can, you can include her and then be like, and re, you know, and some flowers for you. And that's it. Or, you know, you can like change the topic and be like, also, I booked us a um, couple's massage. So things, it's the way you say it, the timing, the timing is the most important. Make mm. sure that she's in, in a good mood. So leave the tree in the car at first, is what yeah. you're saying. Okay. Because mm -hmm. you never know what the situation is when you get in there. So now what's your advice if somebody, I'm asking for a friend, wants to buy a really expensive uh, pot? Is the same applies? Hmm. Asking for a friend. The pot is a delicate matter. It is, right? It doesn't work as well. It's a very delicate matter. Um, there is something he does and he thinks it works. <laughs> okay. Uh, but it's mostly that I already know he really wants it and I feel bad for it and I feel sorry that he is just trying so hard that I just, I'm like, oh yeah, you should get it. So what's the thing that I do? Well, you're always like, oh, I saw this pot, you know, it's, it's a really nice pot, but I don't need a pot right now. I mean, I don't, I don't need a pot right now. We, we shouldn't, um, it's, it's a little too expensive. So I'm like, oh, how much? Oh, it's this amount. But yeah, it's too expensive, too expensive. And so I was like, let me see it, let me see it. And then I see it and he's like, no, 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 but we shouldn't do this. <laughs> I shouldn't do this. I have too many pots. So he's doing some sort of reverse psychology with me. And it's just... You caught on to that. It's just so ridiculous that I'm just like, oh my gosh, just get the pot. <laughs> like, it's fine. So, so I, saw this, I saw this pot. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. But so yeah, no, like everything is about timing. No, it does not work. Well, I guess it works, but it's, it's you're but not... But it's pathetic is what you're saying. Yeah, it's, it's, okay. yeah. Hey, but at least it works. Yeah, I guess so. But, um... Okay. Does anybody else have another question that's, that's a, that was <laughs> such a good one? <laughs> I love that saying, we need new videos weekly, advice by Jerome. <laughs> <laughs> you mean by her? Her advice is much better than mine. <laughs> I'm going to get you guys either arrested or divorced. <laughs> That's what I'm causing. Yeah, that would, that, that would be something. Uh, Beth, hi, Beth. Um, I'm Mary and Jerome. Why are you drinking, Mary? Looks fun. Yeah, so <coughs> Jerome uh, actually made this drink for me. Is a... Oh, that's a good one, too. Make blue a drink. Curas Blue what? Blue Curacao. The name is Curacao. Mm -hmm. We got it um, in Curacao when we went uh, to a cruise that we did and it's amazing. Yeah, it's really delicious. It actually has 26% alcohol, <laughs> which I'm just realizing now and I can feel it already. So maybe don't take our advices that we have given you. Just earlier. have, no, no, yeah. <laughs> We're not 100%, well, Ourselves. at least me, and not 100%. I'm just drinking water. Here, um, but only one, because that's a lot of <laughs> alcohol. But it's crazy because you can't buy it here, right? That's what we've said. Like we, yeah, we could, you can buy it here, so. That's crazy because I feel like I've seen it before. Uh, but yeah, it's a great one. So thank you for asking. How do you feel about a yellow pot for this? 
Well, definitely will be in the options. Yes. Of course. Yeah, and to fill people in, they might not know, Jerome loves yellow pots, and pretty much every time we ask for options, uh, we know he's going to pick a yellow pot. So our OG's uh, subscribers, <laughs> they know that already. <laughs> so they always bring this uh, You know, funny pots. enough, I actually styled a, a tree like this at the uh, Triangle Bonsai Society mm -hmm. that I went to. Oh, that's true. And so they were like, oh, what kind of pot? Uh, it was a, a ficus, just like this one. And they were like, oh, what kind of pot would you recommend? And somebody in the audience said, yellow! And I was like, there you go. It's going to be a yellow one. And some of the uh, older club members, the traditionalists, they looked at me a little funny. So. But it is a good one, a yellow mm -hmm. pot. So anyways, yes, we is. went with the yellow pot after. <laughs> All right, and here, what are you going with this one? Is this going to be broom or? This is also going to be, I mean, I can't get away from the broom because the trunks are just so perfect for a broom style. So I'm not going to go anything crazy. This, that's just what the tree wants to be. Mm -hmm. That's what it's told me. I just feel that the canopy here is going to be more compact mm -hmm. and smaller. And, and Than yeah. the other one, yeah, for sure. Nice, yeah, nice. I agree with you. All right, let me see. Oh. Courtney oh. is so funny. She said, I found myself looking when walking my dog. I guess uh, looking the trees outside in the neighborhood. And so tempted to just take my clippers with. Yeah. <laughs> and then she yeah. said, going to have to block your channel from my husband. My dining room table is now a bonsai stand. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> Reuse, reduce, recycle. Absolutely. All right, let's see. Nicholas, does clipping the wire with the concave cutters dulls the blade? You saw dull that? Dull the blade. And can you talk about tool maintenance? Thank you. So, uh, yeah, you're supposed to use a wire cutter. Thank you for pointing it out. I've been using the uh, concave cut. cutters. I got caught big time. Um, so it will dull your uh, concave cutters. This one is a really, really good tool. It's uh, from Fuchiyama. Somebody gifted this to me 10 years ago and I've been using it to cut wire actually all this time, shame on me. Um, I never had to sharpen it, never got dull. It's such a good tool. So if you have really good tools, don't be too worried about it. If you don't have, you know, if your tools do get dull or you don't want to, you know, risk it, then yeah, use a uh, wire cutter. Now in terms of tool maintenance, so you don't have to do any tool maintenance if you have stainless steel. Um, I never had to sharpen any of my scissors or any of my wire cutters. Um, but if you don't have stainless steels, what I would recommend is that you get one of those uh, butterfly um, diamond sharpening. Like it looks like a butterfly knife, but it has a, a diamond sharpener in the middle with two sides. I like to use that one. Um, that one is really good. Um, yeah, I hope I answered your question. Okay. Um, also, next question, where do you like to get pots from? That's such a diff, that's a, such a good question. I don't yeah. know. Um, because it, it gets increasingly more difficult to source pots. Yeah. Um, I would say online. when, oh, well, well. I mean, online you always have the risk of the pot breaking and shipping, um, and, during shipping. and yeah, shipping can be very expensive. So we, what we usually do is actually when there is a bonsai event, we get it directly mm. from whoever is the vendor there. We like to support, um, local potters. So we do like to go to these bonsai events and buy from them already. So I will say the, the pots that we have or the latest ones that we have gotten has been from local pot potters that we've been going to That's events and, spot on actually. and get it from them. So I will say, yeah, or, or if you have a bonsai nursery around you, most of the time they have pots. Mm -hmm. But pots are so... Um, I don't know. That's something that I don't like buying online. Um, 
right. individually just because I feel that you need to really see it. And it's, as, a, as we mentioned, the shipping can be another <coughs> um, worry now, for you. Another thing is that I have just thought of while you were talking and everything that you said is correct. Um, go to your local, lo local club. They have a uh, swap meet uh, once a year, most of them, or like a uh, auction, like a club auction, and you can get a lot of gems there, right? So that's usually where we get our pots from. I have not ordered a pot in years online. Like if I want something very specific, I choose one of my favorite potters and I ask them to make it for me. Um, yeah, or like she, like everything else that she said. Yeah, and this question is from Phil. Um, is a unique pot a better idea for a show? Is a is the question. Um, when you say unique, so when yeah yeah I would say so. Of course, I mean if you have a production pot in a show is not going to be as well received as if you have like a uh, one-off. So yeah, I would say unique, one-off, definitely is going to help. All right. And while we are on pots, Sam is asking, will a bougainvillea need something a little deeper or can it be shallow? On bougainvilleas, I like to go a little deeper. <clears throat> Just because mm -hmm. they, they do like a lot of water when they are actively growing especially during the summertime, so they dry out fairly quickly. Yeah, and okay. David is saying uh, blessings and, and nice job, all in Spanish. So, hola David, gracias, gracias por tus comentarios. I love it. And Courtney is, is asking, can you share some of the bonsai events that happen yearly? Um, yes. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so we were talking earlier about the international bonsai exhibition that happens in Rochester, New York, usually in September, every two years. And this year is happening, September 9 and 10, in Rochester, New York. Um, we like also the winter silhouette in North Carolina. That one is usually the beginning of December. I'm not quite sure about the dates uh, right now, but they also have a show hand show, right? Like in, in May or June. May or June. That happens um, every year. So that's something to check out from the um, North Carolina. But in general, the bonsai clubs, the per state, they all have events and exhibitions. So depending on our schedule, we always check in what's happening and if we are available we try to to go but um top of my mind those are like the ones that i remember for sure every year mm -hmm. um, yeah same here yeah i would just do a quick uh deep dive on uh, google mm -hmm. to find out what's exactly in your area there is an event uh not in the us it's in europe and it's a trophy one it's mm -hmm. called trophy and we haven't gone to that one yet, and we really want to go. And then that one usually happens at the beginning of the year. It's usually in February, I believe. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's see. All right, and while you are in the last touches of this tree, mm -hmm. I wanted to quickly go over... Yeah, um, maybe what we use for our trees and our products where Jerome finishes up uh, the second tree. So bonsai soil, this is our, this is our brand um, from the bonsai supply. It has four aggregates, which is pumice, lava, which is the base ingredients of every bonsai mix, every good bonsai mix. And then we also have calcine clay and pine bark. So this mix is already sifted, it's washed, it's ready to use. You don't have to mix it with anything else. That's one of the questions that we we'll always get. Do I need to mix it with anything else? Use it as uh, a cis, and this is the mix that we use for all of our trees. 
As Jerome was saying, for the ficus, we recommend you to repot it as soon as you get it, if you get one of these trees, or if you get a ficus right now or a tropical tree, it's a great time to repot. And we always recommend using bonsai soil. You'll see the results, try it for yourself. You'll see how your trees are gonna love it. So we're gonna let the trees speak for the product. And then we have two types of fertilizers that we also use in a monthly basis. And these are these two. This is our all-purpose bonsai fertilizer and our organic um, fertilizer. So there are different uh, preferences and likes for all the bonsai artists are out there. Uh, for us, we use the all-purpose pretty much across all species. Uh, but when we are working with pines, we like to use the organic fertilizer. But as I said, in these two, there is a lot for per artists and, and you use what it works for you. But these are the two options we have. And we have them available on Amazon, on Home Depot, Dot com and also on our website thebonsaisupply.com so and uh, stay tuned uh, we'll be doing a sale for uh, the 4th of July weekend so just if you follow us on social media we are the bonsai supply on, on Instagram Facebook all the school stuff and if you sign up for our newsletter on our website, thebonsaisupply.com, you also will get this invitation to this sale that we're going to have for the 4th of July weekend. So today is Wednesday. It's probably going to go live um, on Friday. So just sneak peek and a um, little heads up <laughs> that that's going to happen. So in Perfect case you're timing. needing fertilizer or soil, we got you. <laughs> All so right. how are we looking? Is that... We ready? are done here, people. <coughs> Amazing. And we are going to bring the second tree that we worked on it earlier. So here we are. We're going to do a quick pick a pot. So let's let's go per tree so we can go. Well, I think they're going to be. Yeah, not confused. Yeah. Similar, similar pots. It's the same, probably. OK, so guys, I would say check on these trees. If you if these were your trees, what kind of pot would you pick? Will you pick a, why are you drinking with my drink? You continue talking. Would it be a rectangular? Would it be an oval? Would it be glaze on glaze? Let us know in the comments, what kind of pot <laughs> will you use for this tree? <laughs> We're gonna mm -hmm. take a couple of options. If we have it here, we'll bring it. So we'll see how it looks. Okay. And we'll also like to take a couple of options and show it to you. This is just for fun. Um, just to give you some ideas of what kind of pots would you use for these trees um, if you get it or if you have ficus uh, yourself. So we'll, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So that while you guys good. write it in the comments, I'm going to pick my pot. Let's see. Can Do I you pick? have? Let me know. Which <coughs> Can I come get it myself? No, no. You let me know. Okay, I tell me you. color stuff, tell me everything. Obviously, oh. give me the yellow one. You oh. only can pick one, so this is the one oh, you're picking. Oh, wait a minute. Because oh, I like that turquoise one over there. This one? Yeah. Okay. I, I like the shape of it a lot. All right. So that one in that color, bam. Okay, so we have two options ourselves and let me see if anybody has options what is your in option? the comments wait a second <laughs> um let's see all right let's see um one rectangle one round both glaze okay and sam says get weird with the color all right <laughs> I, lo I love that uh I like all right that. one rectangle one round both glaze get weird with the colors Okay, I think we got you. So first is Jerome's option. So, so there. what I like about this one is the uh, shape. Take a look at the shape. And I like the size of it. I think this is a perfect pot for this tree. Let me see. Oh yeah. This is the perfect pot for this 
both of these trees. Um, on the color though, I'm not too sure about. Uh, I don't know if it would interact, uh, interfere with the uh, green of the actual ficus. So color, I would like to have a different color, like maybe actually a yellow, I know. Um, like a light yellow would be beautiful, I think. Um, or like a beige, but like this type of pot. Can you see it? Oh yeah, I think you can see it. Perfect. See even the same for this one. Perfect, 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 perfect. I Wonderful. really like this one. All right, so what do you guys think about that option, that uh, light blue or turquoise? Well, I said I like everything except for the color. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we have that option. Then I know I, um, I saw rectangle as an option, mm -hmm. and I wanted to bring this one, which is just um, a lava one. Let's see. Uh, we call it the, the lava one and how's this let's see let's see how that looks so we have oh, you got it. we have this it one cool. over here that looks crazy somebody said go crazy right so that's how we look with it and we have it also on the other one okay okay do you like it or I I like it for one of the, like I guess for the one that you the have it right one. now I would like it I would like it better than okay the other one. All right, and let's see. And of course, the third option is going to be the OG <laughs> yellow pot. So what do we think about our yellow pot? You think it works? I think I might like it for this one. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Let's but see. yellow for the win again, huh? All right. So I see in the comments. Let me see. Blue rectangle, brown rectangle. Oh, Phil, when we see the yellow, yeah, you have the yellow. I will go with glaze. If there was a blended color with some gray, I think we'll blend well either the trunk. I like the green oval. Uh, J pot is beautiful. Is there a purple one somewhere? Purple? We don't have a purple one. The only thing we have is a pink one up there. Rectangular is nice. Yellow, first and third. So first was your blue one. Mm -hmm. And third was the yellow pot. All right. Oh, okay. Seems like we have options, and that is always great. These trees, I mean, definitely with a broom canopy, you have plenty of options. Mm -hmm. But I guess an oval will. Will you think? I think what, oval. Oval, is, right? Oval is the way. overall. I like to have oval in general because nothing in nature is angular, like a rectangle. Mm -hmm. or so. Nature is roundish, ovalish, you know. Yeah. Soft edge. That's why I like that better. Personally. Yeah, Preference. absolutely. All right. Well, we have these two trees. These are um, our final product. Let's do a little, a quick 360. Jerome is going to give you. Are you ready you. for me? <laughs> All right. One, Go two, for it. three. I am going to be taking some pictures. Oh, man. They look great. So you guys can see it better in some measurements. So you have an idea of the actual size and it will go in the next 30 minutes. It will be available for bidding on our website, thebonsaisupply.com under YouTube auctions. It will be a 48 hours online auction. You can participate if you are in the United States, only the US at this time. And it will be shipped right to you and ready to be repotted. So I um, think this is it for today. Thank you for joining us in this hour and a half. <laughs> I thought um, <laughs> time flew by. And wow. it happens when you have fun. Yeah. Yeah. So but you did two trips today. So that's yeah. uh, exciting. And we gave some really good sound advice too. So 
Yeah, so we're getting there. It was, Love it was it. a good one. <laughs> Thank you guys for, for joining us. As I mentioned before, we do this once a month. Next month, we're going to do Jade, a Jade. Mm -hmm. And sure. um, if you guys want to know more about ficuses, we do have two videos about the species itself and also about Anchor, which is a famous ficus that Jerome owns. And, and you can see more about the journey of the ficus. All right, any? No, else? as always, thank you guys so much for spending your uh, Wednesday evening with us, morning or afternoon, wherever you're from. <laughs> and uh, we had a lot of fun, so thank you so much. And yeah. we'll catch you guys next time. <laughs> thank you guys, we'll see you Bye. next month. <laughs>